Welcome to the Blackout Podcast, where I get to talk to amazing people who do an amazing thing. And today I have someone I love, respect, my friend, awesome, awesome human being that does like how do you even have time to do all these things you do? But anyway, Tia Offshore, thanks for coming to the podcast. You're today. welcome, you're welcome. Anytime. So, black women in excellence. How did that start? And how did you grow? Like it's grown gangbusters in the last it has um I, I tell the story so often it's real but it literally started from me going to an event called taking black Goddagen. it was myself and a colleague of mine benita we went we we're going to do some shop and check it out it was one of their first pop-ups they were doing so all Goddagen street was lined up with black businesses that's right up my alley because i'm a black woman and i have businesses and uh from that it was just uh, the, the the amount of women of black women that were there Oh, rank any other business. Mm. So I was like, okay. Um, and I approached most of them and I asked them, was this going to be something that you wanted to do as a business or a side hustle? Right. And the response was, because the pandemic just happened in 2020. And the response was interesting. It wasn't like, oh, no, girl's going to be a side hustle. It was like, I can't own no business. Who mm. where am I getting the money from? Like, who's going to believe in me? Like, I'm just, you know, a girl from down the street. I can't be a business owner. That week, I went home and I said to my fiance, I want to do something for black women. And his response was, as long as it's not another business. <laughs> <laughs> he said, as long as it's not another business. I said, no, it's just going to be a group of women. Right. So I sold it that way. And that was in September 2020. We registered as a non-for-profit November uh, 2020. And now we're going into September, almost three years later this summer. Um it has went like a wildfire in the summer. Yes, 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 yes. I remember um, I was shooting something with you. Um, and, and and I've not seen so many entrepreneurial <laughs> black women in yeah. one space since I've come to Nova Scotia. I was like, mine was blown. Um, okay, so you started the non for profit How did you even get them to know about black women in excellence? Whew, and that was hard. Yeah. Uh, I Number one... Who I am in the community, I wasn't, you know, a, a vital community member. I wasn't a positive community member. So I've been incarcerated. I've been in conflict with the law. I was just unruly growing up. Um, so when, you know, during my process of with my businesses, they didn't get to see that because I moved out of my community. I moved to Spryfield. I went MIA mm. and just re recreated myself for myself. And uh, so they couldn't see the stages I was growing in life. So when I come back out with Black Women in Excellence, they're just like, who is this? Another BS of Tia's. Like, what? No. Um, so for me to get them to come out was very difficult. I actually had to call them, go to doors, and say, like, I'll give you 50 bucks on your area if you do a program with me for 16 weeks. Holy shit. So that's how I built it. And the first cohort, it was hard. I think I had, like... 10 women, and then the second, maybe 15. After that, and it started building momentum, and people started seeing other people start businesses, and they were saying, this is through, like, Black Women in Excellence. Like, Tia is, like, awesome. Um, now it just, I, I don't have to give the honorarias. Um, and I have a wait list all the time. So I just finished my ninth cohort. Fuck, um, I know. Isn't that some shit? Like, yeah. I was like... <laughs> Nine, and you know, for me, I work with women across Canada now, so it's not just in Nova Scotia. Okay. So we have women in um, uh, BC, Ontario, uh, Montreal who log on Zoom wow. um, on their time their time um, zone, and they they we're just out here doing it. Right, right, like, right. Like it's, right, right. it's literally it's badass. Like they're we're just out here doing it. I mean, like you know what, uh, being raised by. Powerful black women is like, I understand the power black woman has. And just seeing that force together, it's mind blowing for me. Um, and you have so many positive stories, like all these women building their own businesses. Yeah. And it's not a side hustle anymore. No. It's actually their main thing. Yes. Um, a lot of them, you know, they start as a side hustle. And, you know, a couple of years in, they're just like, Tia, I made the decision. And I just said, fuck it. I'm just concentrating on my business. If I am burnt out 
for this employer. I can be replaceable. He don't care if I die today or tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm over here making him millions of dollars. Right. I'm burning out. I'm not, I'm not with my children. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this for myself, mm. for what I'm going to leave behind for my kids. And I feel and I found through watching the women, they're starting to get it. Mm. They're starting to get it. Now, I'm not going to tell someone to leave their job. I would never do that. Mm. Um, but there has to come a point in your life when you realize what you're doing for other people, you can do for yourself. If you are, you know, I'm going to say a personal care worker and you work at, say, Northwood and you're working, you know, 16 hour days, four days on, three off, and you're never home with your kids, why wouldn't you want to look at how to start a home care business for yourself mm. so that you can maneuver that and all that stress and time away from your children? you know they're going to benefit at the end. It's not just going to be an hourly pay wage. Mm. Now you get these big contracts that are going to you and then you contract out your team. Yes. So yes, once they yes. get to understand that, um, it, it's good. So it's not no more, you know, black women, we have side hustles. We literally have entities. Fuck yes, yes. Like literally. So yes. it's all that. Oh my God. I, I, every day I listen to you, my, my brain is always fired up. But what was, you know, so you mentioned that you had this not so positive beginnings what bullshit was the, beginnings yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the thing that i guess the the point where you realized you had to do that change um it i went through a breakup with the father of my children um in 2012 2013 almost and we were together for almost 20 years three kids together i was 14 when I went to a relationship with him, he was 15. So we grew up together. So me and him were, you know, the Bonnie and Clyde in the community. Um, it's almost like he went to jail. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, gotcha. like he would go to jail and I would stay out and put my court dates off because, you know, you don't want children's day taking your kids because once they're in the system, you're screwed. Right. When I went to jail, he made sure that he was out. So it was a part of our lifestyle. Holy shit. That's just how we did it. We did it for years like that. And when we we broke up because, you know, he cheated on me um, for, you know, a friend of mine and all that stuff. And that was the year that I think I hit rock bottom the worst. And it wasn't just a financial rock bottom. It was an embarrassment because so many people in my community knew. Oh. They knew he was with this person for four years. No one told me. Four years before I found out. Wow. So I kind of like isolated myself away from everybody. And I just literally just put, kept my head down. And through that, you know, you know, when you go through a breakup and things don't go the person's way that ends up who's cheating, um, it's almost like, oh, if you don't do this, I'm not giving you that. Mm. So I went from having nice vehicles, getting an allowance from him on Fridays and out in the clubs and living a good life, never worrying about money, just worrying about going to jail, um, to now, you know, no vehicle, walking with my children, um, living. I lived up on Creighton in a one bedroom with the three kids and uh, back to the food banks, back on welfare. And that humbled my ass 100%. Mm. So that it was in 2012, almost 2013. It was the fall of that. I realized I can't do this no more. I don't have him to back me up. I don't have that, you know, illegal <clears throat> support. You know, when you're in the, when you're in the streets like that, there's so many people around you to support you. Oh. But I knew after me and him were done, and I said, I'm not doing this no more, that I was going to lose a lot of that support because mm. those are his friends. That's the life that they want. Right, right, um, right. So I was, I was on my own. And I just said, girl, you got to get together. And I literally did. I, I was trying to look for jobs, wouldn't hire me because once you do the criminal record check, I couldn't pass security. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. That was a thing. Um, it was probably, like I said, it was my most rock bottomest I think I've ever been. Even going to jail. That's not rock bottom because you get used to it. Um, you learn how, how to adapt and make friends in there. But when you, you know, have these three small kids and one of my son was 13 at the time, it, it just, I couldn't do it no more, Israel. Mm. I was over it. And then I just delivered newspapers because they don't ask for a criminal record check. All you're doing is throw newspapers outside every night. So I did that for about 18 months uh, back shift. Sometimes I would have my five-year-old in the back seat at the time, sleep in, and I would have like newspapers all around or thrown out the window. And um, I just said one day, what else can I do? I need, I need more money. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the newspapers wasn't doing it. As soon as you, you know, you tell welfare you're working, you have to oh, let yeah. them know. <laughs> Do they take more money from me? I actually have a little bit of a problem with that, right? Huge problem. Because, like, everyone kind of, I mean, we know some maths, right? So if 
like if they like if you make just that little bit more than what you're getting, you they, get off it. It's like yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. So I was almost like going forward, but I was getting pulled back right. at the end of the month when right. I had to do my you know paperwork every month. You had to do on the 18th back then, and I was like, okay, something, something else. I love cleaning. I I literally love it. If I'm having a bad day, I will come home, Israel, pull my oven and stove apart, clean it, fridge, cupboards, baseboards. That's my therapy. So I was like, I've used that through, you know, going through the breakup, cleaning in my home, always doing that. Let me clean people's houses. Mm -hmm. And I start knocking at doors with dollar store bucket, dollar store mop, dollar store Windex. Doesn't fucking work. <laughs> it um, doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it leaves more grease than anything. Um, but it worked for the for the time being. Right. People were, you know, they weren't paying me what I was worth. I didn't know the market, so I was saying like sixty bucks, and it would take me eight hours. Holy sh! Whoa! Sixty bucks, but it was good because that sixty dollars, I knew that night my kids gonna have a great meal. Right. Like I knew I was able to, right, you know, right. pay twenty dollars on my power bill. You know, buy a bus pass. Like I was able to do things. Mm. Um, so for me, it worked at the time, and literally, it just kind of grew from there. Wow. And then I know you you from the cleaning business, you built two other businesses and now yeah. you, you are like facilitating and you you're like talking pretty much three or four times a week. Uh, <laughs> minimum. Minimum. <laughs> How do you like balance all that? For me, you know, when you're an entrepreneur and you have that in your gut mm -hmm. and you breathe, eat and shit that like it becomes a way of life. So for me and people get it mixed up when I tell them this, my cleaning company was doing so well. So then I had one client who messaged me one day and she was like, I'm going to do Airbnb. Can you clean that? I said, well, we can clean. We're not familiar with staging and how Airbnb works. Um, Within four years, we had 37 clients just from Airbnb. Holy shit. And I understood it. I understood the customer service, what a super host was, how to stage, all that. So I built up that. And for me, professionally, and I said to my fiance again, well, you know, all these people are doing these Airbnbs and we're cleaning for $120. What are they really making? So I started looking at, because I'm a co-host on all their properties. So I look at what their nightly rates were. Uh, Never had the credit, so I couldn't buy a property. So I just reached out to someone I knew who had properties in Halifax. And I was like, yo, I did you a favor. We'll clean up one of your properties for you and Dartmouth. Um, now I need you to do me a favor. I would rent, rent from you, market rent. I just need to have um, a parking spot and power included. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And I did it the first year. And after that, um, we ended up being at eight Airbnb properties we were renting from. Um, uh, it was it was a very lucrative business. And then the other one would have been my le vegan lipstick line. I just started that in the, the heat of the pandemic because I wear bright colors. And as a black woman, sometimes you're told it's too much. You look mm -hmm. like a drag queen or it's not really complimentary to your skin tone. And I was like, that's bullshit. You know, there's dark complected women who should not have to wear a red or a dark burgundy. Mm. Why can't they wear an orange or a black or a blue or a pink? Why? So, you know, I developed a vegan lipstick line for black women called Lips and Lashes. So that was basically on my free time. And for me, again, if you're an entrepreneur, they'll know what I'm talking about. You can't help it. You mm. keep building. You build, you build, you build. Now, unfortunately, as everybody knows... Airbnb is coming to an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. coming to an end, but I had a great fucking run. <laughs> I had a great run, let me tell you. Um, we're sad to see it go, but it is what it is. And, you know, we're human. So for me, even watching the, the levels of homelessness in Halifax, mm. it is terrible. So for me, I wasn't mad. Yeah, I think the pandemic even made it worse, right? It made it, it's so bad when I'm driving everywhere and I'm seeing people who are homeless. And for me, when they announced this about Airbnb, I'm probably... One in none who were like, it is what it is. Everybody else is pissed off. And I'm like, no, it, it, I had a good run. Mm. You will grow businesses. And even with my cleaning company, Israel, I'm, out, I'm outgrowing that. It's going uh, on 10 years, July 2nd. And it that cleaning business got me out of poverty, homelessness. Um, just, uh, it got me everything I have today. Right. From that boring, cl me cleaning toilets company. And it provided job opportunities from people for, in my community, other black women, other black men, um, non-black women, non-black men, non-binary. Like there were so many different people that I was able to bring on. And I always looked when I was doing my cleaning company, like on a high peak, mm. their barriers. If you're a single mom, 
I want to hire you on because I know what it's like to be a single mom and not have childcare. Yes, yes. If you're coming out of jail, I know what that's like. You can't get a job that you want because you have a criminal record. Right. Now, it was high on my premiums for insurance and for bond, make them bonded. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to tell you, it was high, but I can at least say that I did my part. So I always look for people like that that needed a hand, a handout um, and a hand up. So I, I pride myself on it, but it's shortly coming to an end and I'm going to pass that down to my oldest daughter because she's been running my cleaning company for many years now, oh, her and her partner. And it's time. What will you be doing? I mean, apart from Black Women in Excellence, what will you be doing? Because I know you're not going to start. Uh, already. <laughs> uh, already, already, already. Um, so with Black Women in Excellence, of course, it's going to do what it's doing here in Nova Scotia. But we are opening a new chapter June 1st in BC, Kelowna, BC. Holy so we've already marketed, branded. We have some partners we're going to be announcing soon. And I have a lady up there in Kelowna, BC, Doria, um, who I met through the Scotia Bank Initiative for mentorship. I was her mentor. And working with her for as long as I have, I'm like, she is me. Mm. She is me. She just needs a reason to keep breathing and keep going hard. And I used to say, would you like to, you know, be the face and be the president of BWIEBC? And she was like, you're joking. I was like, I'm not. I'm asking you again. You tell, if you ask me if I'm joking again, I'm going to pull my, my offer, right? <laughs> and she was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Everything you do is what I believe in. It's my core. Mm. So we'll be doing that. Um, I did... Um, just finished a business plan and I reserved a business name. So I'm starting a small business uh, consultant firm. It's going to be called Femme Noir. So it'll be black women. That's who I'll be working you with. You always have the coolest names. What's it? Yeah. You're always stealing all well, the coolest I'm, names. I'm a female man. and I'm black. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. you know, for the first probably three to five, it would just be me. But after that, I want to have, you know, marketing experts, social media experts, lawyers, um, accountants, bookkeepers. I want them all black women to be a part of my firm. Wow. So that's that's what I'm going into next. <sighs> I'm so man, I'm so like you are so inspiring and and the the I guess the tentacles of it's like you throw this stone in the river and like the ripples just And I want other women to do that. That's why Pedoria, I don't need to be in BC. Mm. I built a foundation at BWIE. Um I'm still the CEO and founder. For me to give her some reins to elevate herself, it's not taken away from me as a black woman. I already have my accolades. Mm. But I'm going to help her build and build her network. And she has her own company called Hol Holistics Living. So she's trying to, you know, open up um, almost like a, a shelter for women um, from the marginalized communities underrepresented who are suffering from mental health and addictions Damn. in a holistic way. Mm. But if I give her the platform of BWIE, it's going to put her in spaces and rooms where there's going to be investors that will say, we want to invest in that idea too. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm all for it. And she gets to build her own network in BC, Kelowna, where there's you don't really see any black businesses. That's how you're supposed to do it. Okay, so here's the thing though. I mean, you know, you're on social media. You're like The way you use your LinkedIn and your Instagram is mind-blowing, obviously. But, uh, you know, you don't, you don't mean words. <laughs> no. So one one example I'm going to bring up was the the business awards. Oh fuck. <laughs> Jeez. Literally, literally, yeah. So um, I, I, well, I mean, you you the the post made all the points you wanted to make, but I'm curious why you said that and. Like, yeah. OK, so I will break it down because a lot of people have asked and not really asked like you did, which I really appreciate. Thank you for asking instead of assuming. So the post wasn't about me not winning and me sucking and being extra. The post was about the work that I've done with the Halifax Chamber of Commerce. I have worked with them for over two years to help them develop their um, D, um what do you call it, DEIA initiative that they have, where they're giving out, you know, free members, to, uh, memberships to black businesses across, you know, Halifax and HRM. Um, that was me. It was me and a few other black women. I won't mention them because they may not want to be part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, we sat around tables with the president. We did it. And then from there, um, the amount of black businesses that went to the chamber because I was helping with this initiative went up. The chamber can't deny it. I think that last time I spoke to them, their diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative was up more than 30%. More than the 30-70 fucking rule that they go on about. <laughs> um, and, you know, they even gave me chamber bucks. I got a lot of money from them 
as chamber bucks because the amount when you when you ref, refer somebody, they give you chamber dollars. I can't even remember how much mine was, but it was a whole heap. Mm. And because of that, because I gave, brought you these women. Um, Eminem said this on a podcast. I can't remember what one it was. He don't fuck with the Grammys and the Oscars. He knows they'll never give it to him. But they put him in a position to be nominated mm. because he knows he's going to bring people that's going to show up for him. Right, right, and right. And that's the same thing I think the Chamber did. They finessed me. They finessed me. I thought they were trying to, you know, really be inclusive to the black businesses in Nova Scotia and Halifax and they wanted to make a difference. Mm. You know, they just wanted to use the platform I had to build up their men- their their membership platform. Gotcha. That's what pissed me off. Um, the awards, I was nominated last year, went hard, didn't get it. And the funny thing about it, last year when I didn't get it, another lady that did get it, we're still friends. We go to eat. Myself and all the other nominees in our category, she deserved it. Kathleen Edwards' her name. She deserved it. Um, this year, it was bullshit. Mm. So we're going to go a little step further from that. Come to find out the person that won it in my category in another category is a chamber board member. Oh. Where's the, eth- where's the ethics behind that? Yeah, I shouldn't have disqualify you, I guess. Right? Apparently, I was told no. They, they, they want board members who apply to them. Like, what? Whatever. Right, um, right, right. They were a board member. And then you were apples and oranges. The person that did win, kudos to her. You, you work well. You're the first, you know, woman to come out um, as, you know, gay in politics. Great. But you, you can go through life and not ever disclose that you're gay. I cannot go through life saying I'm not black. Right. So it was more palatable for them to say at least we have one woman in diverse background yes. Yes. to win. It was bullshit. Gotcha. Um, I don't have a team. BWIE is run by me. I do all facilitations, workshops, pop-up retreats. Everything is done by me. I don't have core funding to have a team. The company she works with been around for 45, 50 years. Mm. She gets a salary. So you're putting us in categories where there's apples and oranges. Right, 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 right. She didn't have to build up her community. I had to build up the black women business community. From zero. From nothing, from scratch. So that's what pissed me off about it. Mm. But it, it, it has been something that a lot of people went quiet on. Um, and I will say that most of the people that pulled their memberships and their ambassadorships with the chamber were white. Oh. They weren't even black. I see. They were white folk. There were white women and men mm. who were disgusted. Even at the awards that night, Israel, it was like birds. It, when, when they didn't call my name, I had people I didn't even know look over at me like... What's going on? Yeah. Like, it was just quiet. I was so stunned. And not because I, I, I assumed I was going to win. I already know I'm a winner. I'm out here doing the things that people talk about doing that they don't do. I fucking do it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay. But you want to hear a top the cake? Yep. The ice on the cake? Please. That year, no other year, they're give, doing a giveaway. And they, you know, strategically or said they just pulled a number out of a bucket <laughs> to win an iPad. Guess who won the fucking iPad? <laughs> Literally, I won the iPad. <laughs> they come walking off stage with the iPad. Congratulations, Tia. And I'm sitting there. Now, my table, I purchased a table at $250 a ticket. I purchased a 10 person, 11 person, sorry, table, mm. all black women in business. Mm. So my table's looking at me. <laughs> the tables on the left, right, and middle beside us are like, no one clapped over the iPad. <laughs> Like, it was like, I know they just didn't give me a consolation prize. Right, 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 right. Oh, so my God. I, and, I, and I did. I did do that post. I never said they were racist. I didn't say anything about them. I just said, you know, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me um, twice. Uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. But you won't get me a third time. Mm. And I will not. And you know, I got nominated again this year. I had seven emails come in about two weeks ago. Um, nominated me again. I said, I don't know how many times I got to tell people, don't nominate me because mm. I'm not going for it. You can nominate me 30 times. Let another black woman do it. Mm. And here's the biggest thing that people don't realize. The chamber celebrated this. The first year in 2021, I was the first black woman in history to be in that category of top five for business leader of the year. Wow. First black woman in their history. So, I mean, mm. yeah, so that just had me mm. pissed off. But you never realize when you're in that moment 
that what you're so upset about and pissed off about today won't even matter in a month or two. Because mm -hmm. I'm over it now. I know what I bring to the table. As my fiance says, you don't bring nothing to the table till you bring the fucking table. Mm. You bring the table, you bring the fold up chairs, and you're creating spaces for black women that no one had the guts or heart to do before. Yeah, no, talking about one of the, I guess, <clears throat> I mean, the, like all the amazing women that uh, talk to when you do your 28 day series. Yeah. Um, like all, maybe in your like 28 successful stories, but one of the standout is Fantanesh. Listen. <laughs> Listen, it's like Fantanish. Um, Fantanish grew up in my community, in Mulberry Park. Mm. Never knew Fantanish. If she, she grew up in my brother's age category. So my brother's about six years younger than me. And never knew of her. And she was kind of sniffing around BWIE just about two years ago. Mm. And we just connected. And I remember I said to Princess, Princess owns P3 here. I said, there's this girl, because I know Princess well. I said, there's this girl. She's a black doula. That's all I knew of her, because she's a black doula. I never knew everything else. And the growth and watching her mm. in two years is fucking mind blowing. Um, Fantina, she's one of them women that no barrier is gonna break her. There's things that are put in front of her on purpose to break her and it doesn't break her. Mm. She, learns, she learns how to jump over, not pivot it. She jumps over or she kicks it in. Mm. Watching her, like I'm, I'm like a proud mama. <laughs> um, she recently received a grant from Credit Union yeah. for her um, healthy and wealthy, um, healthy and wealthy living, I believe it's called, uh, cohort. And she asked me to go to the, you know, awards part. And I was like, are you sure? And she was like, no else, nobody else would want to want to be there but you. Mm, mm. Like, that's where I get my accolades from. When these women are out here winning, mm. you don't even have to mention me. I'm just like, because I know what I've done. I know what I've done with them. Yes. So mm. I, yeah, Fantana sticks out in a lot of people. Mm. And she's so humble about herself. Mm. I think there was a picture that she just posted from the credit union. She was doing the proper you know, businesswoman pose. And I said, girl, can you put that hand on your hip, please? And pop it in a little bit. Like, you ain't flat bummed. Like, pop, like, get some body. And uh, she actually posted it. And she was like, thanks to Tia for forcing me. Because sometimes we're, we're kind of brainwashed mm. to look a certain way and act a certain way as businesswomen. Mm. Like, you're not, you shouldn't wear that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Your hair shouldn't look like this and that. And I'm trying to get the women to understand that it doesn't matter what you look like. It's what you do. Mm. You leave an imprint in what you do, not what you look like. When I go places, I swear all the time, number one, everybody knows it about me. When I go places today, okay, I look all right. But, like, sometimes I'll wear a blazer and a crop top and ripped up jeans and go to a meeting with TD. <laughs> I don't care. You, you Like, you already know I'm over here doing. This is me. This is me. And I'm still able to close a contract. I'm still <laughs> able to go to the negotiation table with the best of them. Mm. And I'm still here being successful, no matter mm, what I'm looking like. Mm, mm, now, mm. today I can't crack for you, though. I can't crack for you. <laughs> I could have came in a hoodie and joggers, but no, I would never do that. Literally. Okay, so we we talked about the post, but you know, one of the things you said, I heard, because I watch a lot of your, all your videos, <laughs> but one of the things you said, it's like, you know, people that are in business really learn how to use social media. Why is that important? And what are some tips you can share? I think the reason it's important because everything is social media. Everything and anything is social media right now. We have a new generation. And for me, it's funny because I'm 42. My generation wasn't really, we weren't brought into that social media aspect, just like, you know, Microsoft or the new computers in the 90s, late 80s. But I have children. I was lucky enough to have children young. So I have my first kid at 14, my second at 17, and my last at 26. Now, they're in that realm. My mm -hmm. son will be soon 28. My middle daughter will be, it just turned 24. And my last is going to be 17 soon. I get to learn from them. What's popping? What's going on? Where are you guys at? So I talk to younger people. Where are you at when you're looking for things? Do you go to Google? They're like, we don't go to Google. <laughs> Instagram. We put the name in Instagram. Mm. Not even, we don't Google Google unless we're looking for a Google map. Mm. And I was like, are you serious? So yeah, so for me, you know, listening to my kids and watching all the people they follow and the younger, you know, TikTokers, the younger younger Instagram influencers, it's, it's a certain age category. Mm. And unfortunately, my people my age, we're going to die off next 20 years. Let's keep it real. Mm. And if you want your business to be sustainable 20 years from now, who do you have to go after? Them young ones. Mm -hmm. You have to go young. Um, that's just my opinion. Me, 
I don't really have tips. What I will say is one thing I tell people, stay authentic. Don't try to pretend or portray you're someone you're not because that social media world, people will screenshot that shit and hold you over your head for five years (laughs) and come back to you and say, well, you said this this time Mm. and now you're saying this. Always keep yourself 100 because it's hard to remember a lie, but it's not hard to remember the truth. Mm -hmm. So I'm big on authenticity. I am who you see is what you see is what you get all the time with me. Mm. You never have to guess with Tia. You don't got to tippy toe. You already know what you're going to get there. Some days it look like this. Some days I'll come out my, you know, my my hair or my weave, my leave out up in the air. Um, some days I'll come on raw with not even a bra on with like pajamas and a, and a host coat. Literally, like, but that's me. Mm. I'm not coming for you to say I'm pretty. I'm coming on to, to put the content in your ear to have you walking away with an aha moment. Mm. So I, I don't, you know, strategize my posts. You know, social media marketers, professionals will say, you have to build a calendar. You have to strategically post and this, this, and that. If you truly follow me, you'll know that I take everything right from fucking TikTok mm. and I run it through all platforms, including LinkedIn. Mm. LinkedIn is, is, is not left untouched. Yeah. I'm turning LinkedIn into, you know, not so uppity and you just post these things on LinkedIn. Mm. I post everything on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. I love your LinkedIn. It's very educative. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of information there. Okay, so one thing you do, though, is... I, I think w- just not you, but like people that I look for, look up to and, and try to emulate. One thing they're really good at is choosing the people that they work with, people that they have around mm-hmm. themselves. And like, that's something you are really, really good at. Mm-hmm. Like, where did that come from? How do you decide the people you work with, the people you have in your circle? Now, I'll talk, the people I have in my circle, I'll wait a sec for that. Now, the people I work with is totally different. Mm. So the women I work with, as long as you're a black woman or you own 51% of your business or you identify as a black woman, we, we're not going to go through, you know, this, this, and that. As long as you identify, we're gonna, I'm going to work with you. Mm. You can be my enemy, mm. but if you need me to help you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there for you um, because I have a mandate. I have a mandate and I'm over here doing, you know, good work, God's work to ensure these women are not going to, you know, endure what I endured growing up and, you know, into my adulthood. Uh, now, people I have around me, listen, I've been through hell and back. You know, there was a group of friends I hung with, and this is most recently, a group of friends I hung with for, oh, I want to say 15 years. And I mean, I hung, like we were in the clubs, we were partying, they were at my host, they were supposed to be in my wedding with me that I'm getting married. Mm-hmm. Like they were asked to be in my wedding. And these were the devil's little mannequins, minions. Um, They were on the side, like, you know, someone says, how's T doing her business? Oh, her little cleaning company, her little business, little shady shit. That's how it started. There was a, sorry, I'll let you continue, but I remember you put up like a screenshot of someone saying something like that. Literally. (laughs) Like literally the little, the little business. And I'm like, little, why are people so like? I don't know. And I, and I let that go for about three years. And Holy shit, that was a long time. I did because I didn't have, I didn't think I was worthy of other people to be around me. I thought these were my oh. girls. That you know, when you hang with someone, you're supposed to stay with them through yeah. the thick and thin. Yeah, you're right. Bullshit. Or die. Ride or die. Yeah. No. No, they'll let you die right out before they <laughs> ride for you. So, you know, I cut them all off about four and a half years ago. Wow. Literally all one day. Holy smokes. Um, number one, they were talking about each other. Mm. They were talking about me. So I put them all on blast. And the text message, they all, like, I shut them all down. Mm. Done. Like, there's no coming back from it. You're basically dead to me. Mm. I wish you nothing but the best in life. You're not going to get it from me no more. Mm. And um, from that, they have tried to come for me, Israel. Like, the email I put out, mm. that's from one of them. Like, they, I get emails like that all the time. Um, it's just them, anonymously. They just won't let it up. I went to an event last year. Just last year. This is how, this is how bad it is. Mm. And I went to, it's called Apple Blossom. So I did a big pop-up down there in Kempville. All the women were there selling their goods. Everybody sold out. Let me tell you, every black woman sold out that day. And then my fiance, he lives down there. He's a foreign worker for the, um, for the government. He's a Jamaican guy. So I go down to the house afterwards. We're chilling. He was like, let's go out to Apple Blossom. So there's one club in all of Annapolis Valley. Literally one, Westside Charlie's. And we go. Everything's great. You know, I look good. I got white on. He's looking good, white on. We're having a good time. And here comes this group of friends. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, God. And I just, <laughs> I kind of flicked my hair. But I'm just like, I'm not even going to be bothered because I know I'm in a better place now, mm-hmm. right? Um, they can't even piss on where I lay my head at this point. 
go into the bathroom. Everything's going to come back out. Within 20 minutes, someone comes out and says, there's something about you posted in the bathroom. So I'm just like, I don't really care. Like, I just, because I don't want to hear them, right? Mm. And another person comes out and they pass me what's posted. So they took, like, their sweet time before they left Halifax mm -hmm. and printed off the Frank Magazine article. Because Frank Magazine did an article on me. It was like a five-page spread, like, last March. And then I was the last issue, and they went bankrupt, and they closed down. Mm -hmm. um, but I, they did a whole five-page smear on me. And I was like, well, I must be in politics. I must have made it. I must have made it. When Frank <laughs> Magazine comes for you, I'm just a little black girl from the hood. Right. They right. came for me. So these individuals printed it off, put it in plastic film, and taped it up on the bathroom wall in the club. Well, how do you have, like, I, I, my question to people like this is like, how do you have such time to do all these things? I always say, I said the same thing. If you spent more time on your business yeah. and less on mine, you'd be totally fine. Yeah. Listen, it's it, so for me, dealing with these women, and I'm still dealing with them, um, it's almost like they can't let it go. They mm -hmm. didn't get closure. We didn't argue. We didn't, you know, square off, mm -hmm. you know, in the parking lot because I'm not about that no more. Um, I just kind of walked away and I'm still living. So to see me out here elevating because I wasn't supposed to be what they didn't want me to be. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm out here doing these things, I'm on podcasts, I'm in interviews on the news, it kills them, newspapers. I'm traveling all across Canada now speaking about my story and how you can go from being incarcerated to being CEO, mm. they don't like it. Now I'm very choosy. Mm. So now, as someone said in one of the emails, that I surround myself with aunties. <laughs> and I do. And I mean, you already know Angela Bassett was called an auntie on from the Oscars. And that term in the black community is a term of endearment. And I will continue to surround myself with aunties mm. because those are the ones who will check me when I'm wrong, but they do mm. it in a, in, a, in a loving way. Mm. And they will support me, elevate me, celebrate me, and just never condemn me. Mm. And these women are the women that knew me when I was younger too. Yes. So they wouldn't sit around me 20 years ago, trust me. Um, but now they're able to really be a part of my growth. And I will continue to hang with the, you know, 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds, even 80-year-olds. I don't care. Because you know why? These black women been here before me, and they're going to teach me everything I need to know to have it in my gut to be able to move forward and make major changes in Nova Scotia. Okay, so, so Tia, like, at the end of the day, we're all human beings, right? And, you know, when you're in the plane, they're like, if the thing comes on, you have to put your own first yeah. before you help people. But it seems like... You do, like, you put the gas mask, you put the oxygen mask on people's face before I you... do. Why? <laughs> I think it's a lot of, you know, me being selfish from when I was, like, in the teens and 20s, mm. where I didn't give a fuck about what my grandmother thought, what my aunt thought, what my community thought about me. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. I didn't care. Mm. Um, having kids young and not really, really knowing how to be a parent at 14. and I was 14 and 17 with my first two kids. Mm. What did I know about being a parent? So me being so selfish then and just considering what I wanted and I wanted to be a bad bitch and I want to be this, this, and that. And there were so many people that I hurt along the way. Mm. Um, me being so mean and unruly and rude to people and I had no respect for my elders then, um, that now it's time. It's time for me to give everything I can give mm. to, again, finish recreating myself for myself. So when I close my eyes that night, I know I did good work. And, you know, some people can forgive me and some people can, but that's their issue because I'm doing everything I can mm. to let you know that I am sorry because I'm over here doing the work that needs to be done. Mm. So yeah. that's why. Okay, so uh, one of your, like I said, I live on your Instagram. <laughs> but one of your your Instagram, your way, I think, Jamaica or some Of course. Country, and having a nice time. I mean, apart from doing things like that, what are some things you also do to take care of yourself? Because, you know, you can't, like, pour from a cup. No, it's so true. And I said this on uh, Templeton's podcast. I haven't mastered that yet. I will say I go to Jamaica every year because my fiancé lives there. And that's my only vacation I really get. Um, in the summertime, I don't facilitate any programs. So I don't really have to log on every night. Because at one point, I was... Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I was facilitating programs for different organizations and my own. Holy shit. And then during the day, doing meetings and working on my companies and doing scheduling for my cleaners. Um, and I said, like, last summer, I'm not doing that no more. So summertime, I do get a little bit of break. I make sure I take my kids, you know, on a... 
financial free type of vacation, you know, within Nova Scotia. You don't got to worry about nothing. I got it. Mm -hmm. um, I do that for you twice in the summer. And Friday nights, when my fiance is in Canada, so he's coming in about two weeks. Nice. Uh, I know. I can't wait. I haven't seen him since like just, what, February, but he's been gone since November. Right, right, right. And he's my best friend. This guy has been with me, Israel, since I was delivering newspapers and I had a vehicle where only one door worked. I have four doors, only one door worked. Like that's the beginning of the story. Well, of this very literally, this, this guy, Holy people shit. have this thing in their head that he's, like, you know, oh, he's just Jamaican. Trying to and I'm like, thing, yeah. I had nothing. I was on welfare. Yeah. He was helping me with gas to get up there to see him. Right. He, like I had nothing. I was broken, literally inside, outside. Excuse me, financial is broken. So for me, he is my best friend. He is a part of everything I've done, yeah. and he is my my biggest supporter. Like literally. Holy shit. So when he yeah. comes on Fridays, I don't. I'm done work at two p.m. I don't do no emails, no phone calls, or Sundays. Sundays, Friday nights are date night, and Sundays are where he cooks for me and another date night. Um, I take naps every day. Yeah, you mentioned it all. <laughs> Like, naps are freaking awesome. I remember as a kid, my grandma always made me nap and I hated it. And now I'm like, I need time to nap. So when you said that, it just took me like, my grandmother, naps are freaking yeah. amazing. My grandmother raised me. So she raised me that way. And then for a while I wasn't doing it. And I realized when I got a little bit older that it's, it's required. Mm. And now where I'm in my realm, like if you could imagine what my days are like, um, I need a fucking nap. So mm -hmm. I shut down at 1230 and I'm usually back up by two, but I won't, uh, if I'm not even sleeping, that's just my time. There's no phone on, no TV. And I'm laying there in my, my bedroom because I work out of my home. My office is there. Um, curtains closed. I'm just really releasing everything. Because there's days I have great meetings where I have negotiations and I'm and, and we agree on a price and I pick up a check. Mm. Then there's days where I'm arguing with the government. And I'm arguing with banks to fight for black women um, to say they, they need this access to, to capital. What do you, you keep saying there's barriers, but what are you doing as banks to break uh, these barriers for them? It's kind of crazy because they have these programs like like for black people. I can't it's like it's segregated money. It's like even, you know, I might go, like, it's, like, I've applied to, say, this channel that's not black, and it's, like, pretty straightforward, I have everything, and, you know, but now, applying to the black channel is even more difficult. It is, because what they're trying to do, they'll say that we're doing it in a holistic, different way, which you're not. You may not look at the credit, but you want every fucking thing else that goes, that you don't even need it. Like, literally, um, I call it segregated money. Mm -hmm. I know they don't like when I say it, I say it all the time in meetings. This is segregated money. You're 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 talking about barriers, but you know the barriers. If you watch my 28 day series for crying out loud, you can get barriers for every fucking woman that was there. Mm. Here are the barriers. Mm. You got the data. You know um, the, the the black entrepreneurship knowledge hub released data research they've done during COVID. Women's entrepreneurship knowledge hub out of Ontario, same thing. There is data. There's research that have been done. Tribe just did one. Like what? Or what's the problem? So there's days that I'm advocating so hard for these women that my head's pounding. Mm -hmm. So I need that time. Um, so I just, it's almost like when I'm on social media, I don't have set times. I just do it when I'm feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, as I was sitting here today waiting, I went on TikTok to do a TikTok while I was waiting. So I have a moment, I'll do it. For me, if I have a moment, I'll do something for myself. Um, but trust me, me working with women and seeing them win Israel is filling my cup. If I was doing all this and they weren't, mm. they weren't coming as hard, that's when I would be drained. Mm. But every time I see a post... It just fires you up. Like, um, she, you know, I guess Fantanesh again, also got the thing from QE2 too. Mm -hmm. So it's like that just keeps you going because it it's does. like all this work I'm doing, I'm actually seeing the fruits of your labor. Yeah, literally. And that's when people say, oh, don't burn out. And I was like... If I was always that straight shooter, like when it comes like straight person across the board where I was a good person all my life and I didn't live and I didn't do this and that, shit. I've already been living in everything else. I had enough time in jail laying in my cell eight hours of the day to, you know, not burn out. Like I'm good. Right now is my time. Mm. And like I say to a lot of women, you know, Black Lives Matter during the pandemic. You know, then Indigenous Lives Mattered right after Black Lives Mattered. Fuck, now we're going into a, a realm, if you can feel it from the government, Black Lives Matter, Indigenous Lives Matter is not going to matter another couple of years. Mm. There's going to be another fucking matter. Mm. And sure enough, there is one with regards to violence against women. 
So now we're hearing a lot of that. That's going to be what the new matter is. So if we don't capitalize on what we need to capitalize on now, we ain't never going to get this fucking time back again, Israel. Wow. And that's why I go as hard as I can. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, we have to do this again, but I'm not going to let you go without asking this because, you know, you've taken all this journey on your life. And I'm thinking, there's like this little <clears throat> girl or, or boy out there watching and or listening to this and thinking, you know, I mean... How do I get to where she's at now? What do you tell that person? You have to want it. Dedication and commitment is the key. Uh, perseverance, because as black individuals coming from marginalized, underrepresented communities, primarily low-income communities, it's, there's going to be barriers set up every time you take a step. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ready to kick them fucking doors in and break glass ceilings um, in order to you know create that change for yourself. But you really have to be dedicated and committed and eat, breathe, and, you know, shit your business or even your career. Like, you have to be about that life. If you're not about it and you're not going to put the work in, yeah, it ain't going to matter. You can talk, talk, talk all you want. Mm. Um, but literally, it, it can be done. I am like a testament that you do not have to continue to be who you were and just be mediocre. Mm. You can scale who you are. And it can happen in a year. But you have to start. Wow. To Upshow, it's always great talking to you and all the amazing things you do for, you know, not just even just black women, for everybody you do. And I'm super grateful you came here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And we have to do this again. Oh, absolutely. Anytime.